I am Kunle Adeyemi. We are at the uh, AZA Conference 2013 in Cape Town, South Africa. Well, I presented the African Water Cities Project. This is a research project that looks at the intersection point of uh, issues of climate change and rapid urbanization in African cities and communities. And we looked into different parameters, of course, criteria, GDP growth rates, the urbanized areas, the net migration patterns, population growth, affected areas of flooding, the signs that we're seeing, and sort of put this information together in a conceptual frame work and ranked these cities and identified um, what we call the top 20 potential African water cities. So Lagos sits at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, of course. This is the main city, the red parts are the main areas, and 30% of the surface area of Lagos is covered by water. In fact, when you look at it geographically, there's a little missing link here, which uh, should be a bridge, and it's, it's in plan. But once that bridge is in place, circulation of Lagos will be completely you know, around a body of water which actually would make the heart of Lagos a body of water. And within this heart, of course, is a community that has been in existence. And that community is called Makoko. Uh, Makoko is a community uh, that has existed for nearly 100 years. It's basically uh, an aquatic community. Now, it's a fishing and sawing community. One would ask, why are they on water? You know, it's not, this is not a flood condition. No, it's just the way they live. So we, we um, produce a re research report. Um, we were supported by the Henrik Bo Foundation and ultimately built this structure. Makoko Floating School is a structure that addresses the issues of urbanization, climate change, water, waste, food, and in an interesting way, policy. It's a floating structure that is built out of local materials, local resources, and provides space and infrastructure for students to use as a school and the community to use as a community center in the evenings. We've done a lot of calculations on, around how this works, so it wasn't just about strapping some wood and, and barrels together. Uh, and it's, it's a, a building that is com completely naturally ventilated, the solar panels for energy, they harvest rainwater, collects the rainwater and uses that, some of that for vegetation. Uh, we are now working on the uh, agricultural part of it where the waste is used as compost and the compost is used for the vegetable farm. The shape of the building of course stands out because it's a triangle. Uh, and we have decided, we decided to work with the triangle because the triangle is the most uh, stable structure in terms of stability on water. It's also a mobile structure, which means that in the future it could be relocated. And uh, more importantly is that it's fundamentally a structure that can inhabit different functions. Whether it's a school, a house, a church, a mosque, a theater, anything can be within it and it's also scalable. We've got three floors now, we can scale it down to two, scale it down to one, multiply to let it to grow uh, like you would cultivate agriculture. We're living in very interesting times in Africa at the moment. We're living in times of opportunities, at the same time challenges. So we're going to be seeing a lot of changes in um, development and architecture. Uh, in this next coming years. Now, but what's interesting again is that what do we do with these changes, with these developments? Are we going to follow the same trajectory that the uh, developed regions have followed? Are we going to learn from the failures that they've, they've had? Is the architecture going to be architecture that is indigenous to, the, to us, to the environment, to the culture? Um, I think a few architects are already addressing these questions that are focused on solutions that are for the environment and uh, by the people in the environment. Today we've been able to plant this seed 
and perhaps tomorrow there's a there's a possibility that we can cultivate this seed, this seed to grow and somewhere in the near future generate a new type of architecture and urbanism on water for coastal African cities.